Right, so Big Ed and alcohol are a volatile mix and we're about to see the absolute worst of it. Today, we're looking at episode two of 90 Day Fiance, The Last Resort, which features cheating, an unwelcome appearance of Little Ed and the season's first big fight. So first up, Big Ed and Liz are reflecting upon their first night at the resort. Things have gone well between them so far, which has given them hope that they can make it through the process together. However, not for the first time, Ed's focus is perhaps in the wrong place. Tonight's kind of a reminder on a, we have a chance. Like I have hope for us right now. I think we're in first place. I really, I think we're the number one couple. Oh. Number one in terms of what? Most likely to set the world record for the most breakups in one therapy session. Honestly, after 10 splits, the breaches of trust, all the toxic behavior before, during and after arguments, and literally everything else we've witnessed over the seasons, they are in no position to feel proud of themselves. But to not only do that, but also go on to compare themselves to others is shameless. In the last episode, which was literally this very same day, Ed said that he just wanted to focus on himself and Liz over the next two weeks and he'd do well to stick to that. Anyway, the following morning, the group therapy sessions get underway with a game. I know I can do better than them. Um, I'm not looking forward to winning. I'm looking forward to crossing the finish line. I'm looking forward building to Building with winning. trust. I just want to win. As always, Big Ed's priorities are in the complete wrong place. So in this challenge, one person from each pair has to run through an obstacle course, picking up and dropping objects. However, as they're blindfolded, their partner, watching from the sidelines, has to guide them through it. The whole point of this is for the therapists to assess the teamwork and communication skills of the couples. So which of them crosses the finish line first is irrelevant. But still, Ed's desire to win knows no bounds. And as he leaves the starting blocks, it becomes immediately clear that he's up to his usual tricks. Right. Sh that. I think he can see. Don't cheat, big guy. You know you're not listening to anything I'm saying? Hang on, he can see over here for sure. So Ed finishes too quickly, leaving Liz feeling unsatisfied and neglected. What a surprise. Seriously though, what is the point in cheating during a therapy session? I know he's a very small man, so things often go over his head, but missing the point on this one is crazy. And he didn't even try to act like he couldn't see. He was bolting around that challenge like a pug doing the agility course at Crafts. <laughs> So that's cheating, huh? Yeah. This is therapy. I studied the course. You're supposed to be taking this serious. That was not teamwork. We can all tell that you can see. As if he thinks that anyone is going to genuinely believe that he studied the course. And even if he did, like that would be impressive. It's nice that Liz understood the point of the task, but he doesn't care what she thinks or how she feels. All he cares about is the fact that other people know that he cheated. Hopefully this is good news, at least in terms of the therapist being able to identify where the problem lies in this relationship. For now though, Jovi, who has paired up with Angela because Michael hasn't been able to make it, comes in clutch to deliver a pie straight to Ed's smug little face. Oh. Cheaters never win, motherfucker! <laughs> Not gonna bite. Not gonna bite, bitch. Woo! Yes! Losing despite cheating is tragic and will no doubt dent his fragile ego, but to lose to his arch nemesis is a wound that won't soon heal. For those of us that come for the drama, this was the spark that we needed to get the fires burning. I mean, he says that he's not gonna bite, but calling Jovi that just shows that it got to him. And as the challenge goes on, Ed continues to bubble up inside. Hey Jason, he didn't run across the line. Isn't that a disqualification? That's bullshit. Ed, let it go. I'm not gonna let it go. Let it go. You, you call me a cheater, bitch. And now he's calling Kelly it too. Aswellu said that's cheating and Kelly said, yeah, because you were cheating, Ed. How has that rattled you so much? Well, hopefully we're about to get to the bottom of that. As the sun begins to set, they all gather around to discuss the challenge with the therapists who start off by asking Ed to explain his behavior. I didn't feel like there's any communication. I, honestly, when you said what it was about, I didn't really get it until I sat down and I saw that I don't trust Liz. Where has that come from? I get that Liz has trust issues in the relationship because Ed has broken her trust before, but why does Ed have them? And how much do you need to trust someone to follow their directions around an obstacle course anyway? It sounds like he's being manipulative and just finding a way to blame Liz for him cheating. But weirdly, the therapists don't call him out for it and just continue to let him speak. I had a focus, I had a goal, and I was gonna do whatever I could to win. And that's why I cheated. <laughs> <laughs> so you 
no, don't applaud him for it. I swear he seems to get a pass for behavior that so few others would be able to get away with. I mean, I know he looks like a kid getting told off in detention with his feet dangling off the ground like that, but he is an adult and he should be held accountable like one. I'm glad he admitted to cheating. I mean, it's a step up from claiming to not be able to remember like he did in the last tell-all. But honestly, I'm pretty sure he only did that because he knew there were cameras on him and he'd get exposed if he continued to deny it. Like this wasn't honesty, this was saving face. It shows progress that you did admit to cheating. Like, I'm proud of you. But at the end of the day, you cheated and it just shows that you're not listening and you're not trusting. It's so weird. It really is like an adult talking to their child about their bad behavior. It was a mature and healthy way to go about it from Liz, but she gives him too much slack too. I wonder if it's because she fears that if she doesn't applaud him for the tiny things that he does right, he'll never do them again. Anyway, with the first day done, they make their way to the resort's hot tub. Ed and Liz are the first ones in, and no doubt influenced by copious amounts of champagne, Ed decides to take his shorts off and surprise Angela when she arrives. This ain't a hot tub. This is my bathroom. Oh my god! Oh my fucking god! How you doing? <laughs> I hate this show sometimes. You know what, six years ago my nan began losing her eyesight and for the first time my sympathy has turned to jealousy. I missed my life 30 seconds ago before I had the scarring experience of witnessing that. I mean for goodness sakes, he looked like one of those unfortunate frogs that gets pinned against the board for dissection in a biology class. Get on in here girl! <laughs> He gets the medal of courage because Michael's about three inches bigger. <laughs> Michael is three inches bigger. I don't know, Angela. I don't think being three and a half inches is anything to brag about. Also, that laugh was almost as traumatic to my ears as the previous scene was to my eyes. On a serious note though, it's a good thing she laughed because that could easily be a court case. They're at Isla Bella Beach Resort, which is in Florida, so US indecent exposure laws still very much apply. Ed did enough there to scare away any normal human, but in this case, it's Angela he's dealing with, and she doesn't hesitate in getting him back. Ed, not to be smart, but we can give you an extension. Oh my god! The water's cold! In a hot tub in Florida in the middle of summer. Yeah, you're not fooling us that easily, little Ed. So eventually, Ed puts his trunks on just in time for the arrival of Molly and Kelly. Angela returns and tells Ed to do to them what he did to her, but fortunately, he says no. Kelly asks what she meant by that though, and when she tells them, they don't take too well to the news that Ed was naked in that water just moments ago. When Mima told me Ed was naked in the tub, I was like, oh God, why? And I'm in the water, oh God, Ugh, I'm gonna throw up. And who can blame him? You could not pay me to get in that water. Also, I'm surprised Liz took that so well. Given her fiance just exposed his private parts to another woman, she would have every right to be fuming at him. I mean, can you imagine how Ed would react if she drunkenly flashed another guy? All hell would break loose. Well, with the four of them in the tub, Liz asks the other pair what they enjoyed most about their first day of therapy. In response, Kelly says that it was nice for them to find out that, at the very least, they could communicate well with each other. Liz then asks another question, but it seems Ed is getting frustrated with the focus not being on him for once. How is it seeing each other after a couple months? I mean... I just want to tell you guys that I love you and I hope everything works out. That is just so fake and pretentious. He barely knows them. There is no way they hang out outside of the show. And he was calling Kelly a bitch just a number of hours ago. He doesn't love them or care about their relationship. He's had a few too many glasses of champagne and is being performative for the cameras. And as well, the proclaimed feelings are very much not mutual. Very extremely annoying when Ed interrupts everyone. And I'm still thinking about when he called me a bitch, but. I'm gonna let that slide. I'm gonna give him that one. I respect the maturity to be able to let it go, but once again, Ed is getting away with way too much for my liking. He deserves to have someone saying that calling someone a bitch like that is not okay. And just saying, I love you guys, doesn't fix it. Frustratingly, Liz makes it clear that Ed interrupted by saying, back to my question, how are you guys? And Ed interrupts again. He's here, I think right now, he's here. You're here. He's trying to lay it all out on the table, I feel like. Yeah, but, but can I say something? No, do. 
No, you can't. Just pipe down for one second, please. Honestly, if you can't let one other couple answer one question asked by his fiance without making it all about him, how is he gonna handle sharing the stage with four other couples across this entire two week period? They need to fill this jacuzzi with just one more inch of water to cover his yappy little mouth so that the adults can speak. This is about our society. And you know that you like to take over all the conversations. Do you like to? No. I love how he interrupted Kelly by saying no to the accusation that he has a problem interrupting people. Again, it's like they're in a hot tub with a child. Even the way it looks like he's constantly about to go under and won't stop moving around like he's about to show everyone his best attempt at a handstand. Anyway, I'm glad Kelly is starting to stand up to Ed, but given he hasn't got the maturity levels to deal with that, this is only gonna go one way. Do you not get a lot of attention? Because I get a lot of attention. Ugh, this type of thing makes me not want to do videos on this guy so badly. 90 Day Fiance and all the spin-offs are undeniably entertaining and you guys ask for Big Ed and Liz more than any other couple. But sometimes I hate the fact that I contribute to the attention he's getting. I'm just glad that it's not good publicity. I feel like given he's already on TV, everyone highlighting the flaws in his behaviour in videos and comment sections and stuff is better than letting it go completely unchecked. You just have to wonder with his level of arrogance and delusion if he's aware of the fact that the reasons he gets so much attention aren't good ones. The way it comes uh, off, you, it seems like Well, you're you making don't. a negative observation. And if you- No, I'm not making, I'm asking a question. No, you're not. There's a difference, so you're okay. cutting me off. My goodness, he even cut Kelly off whilst Kelly was explaining that he just cut him off. It's just such a classic Big Ed timeline. Literally five minutes ago, he was fully naked in the pool, drunkenly declaring his love for Molly and Kelly, living in his own little fantasy world. And now, literally just moments later, he's getting grounded in reality by getting called out for his behavior and causing yet another argument. Do you understand why I called you a bitch? I can't do it. Why, you, that, explain that, this to me. And then yeah. that's going to be the last you, time you're going to okay, do that. Whatever, now. man. Don't, yeah. don't try to You're not right. What but, do you mean? No, no, no. You're not going to talk down to me. I'm not Liz. Oh damn, Liz catching strays. You know, I doubt it, but I really hope she'll realize that he's right and that she doesn't have to tolerate this kind of disrespect from Ed either. Also, Kelly wasn't even being confrontational. He just agreed with Aswellu that Ed was cheating, which Ed went on to admit. The only other thing that Kelly said to Ed at the time was let it go. Once again, Ed could be mature, acknowledge what they're saying and apologize, but instead he's exacerbating things and pretending he's done nothing wrong. You better watch who you step to when you're gonna call another man a bitch, because you might get your fill you, loud. Do you think I'm yeah. afraid of anybody? Ed, you're three foot two. You should be afraid of everybody over six months old. Also, this is the second time this year alone that Ed has been told that he's gonna get socked if he keeps talking to people like this. In the taxi on the way to the hotel in the Single Life Season 2 Tell All, Jovi told Ed that if he kept talking to women the way he was, someone would knock him out. And now Molly's telling him pretty much the exact same thing. It's a dangerous game running your mouth like this. And once again, if the cameras weren't there and he didn't have the safety of the security team, I really doubt that he'd be acting so bold. No, I don't care who they are. Your mouth is so reckless. I'm a young con at Tito. Come at me and I'll take you down. He's I don't care how big you are. He want to roll and do cartwheels. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Why are we a Yondon Aikido, what is this man waffling about? I doubt he really is a fourth degree black belt, but even if he is, a bit of modern Japanese martial arts training isn't gonna help him take down a man five times the size of him. Ed could do 10,000 kicks and 10,000 karate chops to Kelly's shins, but Kelly could just flick him away like a somehow even more irritating version of a mosquito. Anyway, the argument continues and Ed makes the claim that Kelly called him a cheater. You made a full she statement right there. You never did that. She said, I, I was yeah, like, and I gave up. Yeah. That's my lady. I'm gonna have to. Shut the fuck up. Oh my word, this has gotten fiery and it's only day two. I was expecting the drama to come, but I didn't think it would be this quick. Now I'm wondering if Ed is even gonna make it out of this thing alive. And honestly, I thought it would be Jovi he'd be beefing with, at least to begin with. I can't believe he's made a new enemy already. When they're all together again, I can just feel that they're all gonna gang up on Ed and it's not gonna end well. So if you wanna keep up with the show and find out what happens next as soon as the video's out, make sure you're subscribed down below. And as always, thanks for watching.